Oh, just for the inconvenience, and now will be a good time to download the United app if you would like to watch any movies or TV shows that we do have on the app. Once again, we do apologize for the inconvenience. Morning from San Francisco International Airport. Today I'm heading to New Orleans, connecting in Houston on United Airlines 382. Join me on today's trip report and flight experience. Air Canada just opened a Maple Leaf Lounge here on June 28, 2023, and so far I've read great reviews. Thankfully, my previous flight landed at Terminal 2, and the lounge is on the way to Terminal 3. I can access this lounge even though I'm flying United Domestic, thanks to my Star Alliance Gold with Asiana. I entered the lounge around 9.30 on a Saturday morning. It's not very busy right now as the Air Canada flights have already departed for the morning. This lounge is pretty big at 8,168 square feet. As you can see, there's a lot of room for seating and there are some private rooms with large televisions on the right. The food and non-alcoholic beverages are just past the TV monitors and it's still breakfast time so there are some scrambled eggs, bacon, black beans, potatoes, corn and flour tortillas if you want to make breakfast tacos, as well as some fruit, salsa, guac, and cheese. The coffee maker wasn't working that well, so you could order from the barista, and that bar doesn't open until 11 a.m. The other highlight is that this lounge has an outdoor seating area, so if you love plane spotting, this is a great place to see the planes at Terminal 2. There's my Alaska flight from earlier at D3, as well as a Delta plane over there. So, compared to LAX, this lounge looks a lot bigger than the outdoor area at the United Club and has a better view, in my opinion, than the Star Alliance Lounge. You saw my breakfast taco fail as the corn tortilla fell apart while I was eating. Anyway, as I know I won't get a lot of food on the United flight, I always load up in the lounge. Back inside, I decided to start working on the strip for the flight. I feel pretty motivated looking at that. Overall, I found this to be a nice lounge. I just wish some of the food was restocked a bit quicker and there was a barista on hand to make lattes and other coffees. And now I'm heading over to Terminal 3 and the F gates for my flight. I love how you get a great view of the tarmac just by walking here between 2 and 3. Be prepared for at least a 10 minute walk from where the Maple Leaf Lounge is to the F gates at Terminal 3. My Star Alliance Gold status on Asiana also allows me to access the United Club. Let's take a quick peek at the one by the E-Gates. Unfortunately, it was so crowded compared to the Maple Leaf Lounge. They were still serving breakfast and I made an English muffin with some eggs, cheese, and sausage. There was one quiet place and it's right here. It's kind of hidden as there's a long table where you can plug in your device. Uh, it's right next to the restrooms which are on the left there. The lounge is not overcrowded, but definitely full, and if I have a long layover, I'll definitely hit up the Maple Leaf Lounge again. I'll definitely be getting my steps in today as I've now walked from Terminal 2 and the D concourse all the way to Terminal 3 and the F concourse. Today, Flight 382 is departing from Gate 22. Today I get to fly on the Boeing 787-10. It's the first time I've flown the Dash 10, so I'm really surprised and excited, and I'll explain at the end. This plane is just over four and a half years old, with registration November 12005, and first flew with United January 26, 2019. I just got to the gate about three minutes before the 1040 supposed boarding, and the flight's already delayed. But look at that line for Group 1. And remember, before we board, there are all the people who get to pre-board first. Waiting for the cleaners to get off. This should be in a couple minutes. But once the cleaners are off, we will start the pre-boarding. Jeffrey, you are now welcome the pre-board. Pre-board include customers with disabilities, unaccompanied minors, people with children who are younger, active military, and global services and Premier 1K. Our 32 1K customers. Group 
one, which I'm a part of because of my Star Alliance Gold status, include United Premier Platinum and Gold, as well as anyone flying in United Polaris, First, or Business. By the way, if I had not used my status, I would have been in Group 2 because I would have used my United Explorer card to purchase the ticket. Today I'm in 39A, a window seat, and preferred seat, which is free for Star Alliance Gold members. Flight attendants at the entrance had sanitizing wipes if we wanted to take one. There's the side profile of the seat. Remember there are 199 economy seats laid out in a 3-3 configuration. The seat has 31 inches of pitch and 17.3 inches or 43.9 centimeters of seat width. And the seat reclines 3 inches or 7 centimeters. Little firm, you might want to use something to give yourself some lower back support. I usually roll up my jacket uh, in that case. Seat width is only 17.3 inches, and for what it's worth, that's still 0.3 inches wider than on the MAX 9, which was my originally booked flight to Houston. The overhead bins are nice and large, and all carry-on can fit on their sides. In economy, there are two power outlets shared between the three seats. The in-flight entertainment screen is 9 inches, so it looks like there's a dual prong headphone jack. A regular 3.5 millimeter plug-in will work just fine too. There are the safety instructions in Hemisphere Magazine as well as the tray. And Wi-Fi is available as well as streaming content if you have the United app on your phone. The leg room is okay. I can at least cross my legs and not have my knees touch the back of the seat. But then again, I'm 5 feet 7 inches and I don't have long legs. But there you can see pretty comfortable. Turning the dial will allow the tray table to come down. The tray table does slide closer to you and then you can lock it into place by putting it up and then turning the dial in the opposite direction. No, the lights were not flickering like that during the entire flight or at all. Though I think it would have been cool if the lights were doing that with the song that was playing in the background. We have some adjustable headrests, there they are, and there are three air vents and three lights above the seat, and they are adjustable. So I hope you enjoyed that quick overview of the seats on the Boeing 787-10 in economy. And finally, I want to show you my view for the three hour, four minute flight down to Houston. It's pretty cool. One of the most interesting features of the Boeing 787 is that there are no window shades. There are dimmers that the window seat passenger controls by pressing a button, or the crew can lock the dimmers as necessary. Pressing the top half makes it brighter, and pressing the bottom half makes it darker. Some people don't like it because it possibly lets in too much light. But, from a videographer's perspective, especially if you're seated by the wings, when it's shaded in blue, it makes for an interesting and artistic looking camera shot. Finally, for comparison, here's what the windows look like when they're fully tinted and not. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Despite the messy and crowded gate you saw earlier, and now being delayed trying to board such a large plane like the 787, the boarding looks fairly orderly once inside as the last few passengers get on board. It looks like we're just about to push back, but now many of our in-flight entertainment screens have gone black. So wait for it, an announcement is coming on this. Possibly some more delays are coming. Flight deck, uh, we're welcome aboard our flight. United Flight 382, now stop service to Houston, Texas, 3 hours and 4 minutes in route today.
it looks like uh, right now we're going to be parking at uh, the north side of C7. We'll be an update on that once we get closer to Houston. We're just wrapping up a few you know, last minute uh, items on our little uh, checklist here in the cabin and the uh, flight deck. We revised the uh, audio with the visual the monitors are not working on the airplane. So we want to make sure those things work for you because that's what you for. So we call Nemus and uh, they're going to come up and, and try uh, rebooting that and uh, to see if they can get that to work. I'm sure that they will be able to do that. So they're on their way. And uh, once those, it takes a few minutes for the to uh, do. Uh, we'll see how that works. We want to make sure that's working for you as well as the Wi-Fi. So that being said, we'll uh, be pushing back here and another few minutes. That's enough. We're going to have to wait for that departure. Let us help you to do anything for you at any time. I think you're welcome to work. The delay would mean our pushback is now 40 minutes behind. And a lot of us, myself included, have one and a half hour or less connections out in Houston. Doesn't look like it's working, unfortunately. So, we'll see what it says. Um, you know, the thing about it is, is it may take a while for them to fix it, but we want to get you to Houston. So we're, we've asked our, our person of asking to make the PA regarding uh, maybe giving you guys some miles or talking to you for this. If you need to work, I get it. We want to get you there, but um, we've tried to reboot it through different times. And it uh, doesn't look like it's working. We'll see what the has to say. Wi-Fi is working, so unfortunately, uh, that's it. Just be patient with us, we'll get you to Houston. The block time is actually 3.46, and the flight time is 3.04. So hopefully we won't be uh, breaking the time. We're going to have a couple more customers on the team. Thank you, Madam Chairman. For Ms. Bill, it's a two-hour customer for Chicken 5 with us this afternoon. All right, try to team is going to make sure you have a great flight. Well, service our passion and safety is the top priority, so please take a minute and pay attention to the following safety demo, even if you're a frequent flyer, as each aircraft type is different. Please review the safety card located at your seat and follow along. Remember, the seatbelt sign is on. Please buckle your seatbelt. Okay. The metal fitting over the lock and pulling the strap up for the clips. The shutter strap must be attached for taxi takeoff and landing. To release, push down on the metal fitting and lift. Put the rest of the rest of the ship. Put the beverage must be collected or for departure or removed by the collecting remaining items. But the tennis is complete, final thing check to be seated. This is the next row, we encourage you to open the window shape for taxi to take off. So we're finally pushing back about 30 minutes behind schedule due to this technical issue with the IMB. But wait, I thought it wasn't working, and now it is. It seems the problem is fixed, so I don't know why they said it wasn't resolved, or maybe it did resolve itself eventually, or if this was just some overreaction or what. It doesn't matter anymore, we're finally on our way. So I'll be able to show you the entertainment here, and a little bit later on. Passing by during our taxi to 28L is JetBlue's new livery, the Mint livery named Mint, with stars in between the letters. It's arriving from Fort Lauderdale as B6577. We're just about to take off, so enjoy our takeoff over San Francisco.
just like uh, on our weather program, we have an area of turbulence that's coming up. It's like about, uh, in about 15 minutes, it should last for 20 minutes. And then it should be the, the second area, we should be above all that. Well, again, Houston, the weather is nice, best of winds are going to be at 40. So for a three hour flight, we're given very little to eat for free. The free choices included a choice of Biscoff, which is what I got, and a cookie or fruit bar, and got some water. Now you can see why I always load up in the lounge before domestic flights in economy, which is a perk of Star Alliance Gold with a foreign carrier. So I'll be watching the Cityscape video with classical music playing in the background for a while. I've noticed I sleep pretty well when I fly in either the 787 or 8350. In the 787's case, the cabin altitude is set to a maximum of 6,000 feet compared to 8,000 feet on, say, a Boeing 777. The cabin humidity is also a bit higher at 10 to 15 percent compared to older planes, which is in the single digits. So the captain said we're going to experience some turbulence along the way as we pass over the Four Corners area. So check out how the wings are reacting to this turbulence. And then in a moment, you can see what it looks like to experience the turbulence inside the cabin. The turbulence lasted about 15 to 20 minutes. And then a second round of beverages was also served. Some more water, please. Before we land, I want to show you what the restroom looks like. This one's at the back of the plane. It's been a while since I've flown on a wide body, November 2019 to be exact. And this is a lot more spacious than the restrooms on the narrow bodies I've flown in lately. There's the code hook for you. Anyway, hope you enjoy seeing me. And now let's head back to the cabin because we're going to be landing in Houston very shortly. One of the best features available to Star Alliance Gold passengers on United is the ability to change flights to some other flights for free. You can do this when you check in online as you'll have an option to search for other flights and confirm a seat for free. But usually this is only available if a seat in your fare class is open. You also get to choose a preferred seat, which are the economy seats usually behind Economy Plus. The other option available that I didn't see really talked about is the same day confirmed seat. If you check in on the day you depart, it is possible that more flights are available and you can confirm a seat for free. This is very beneficial if you have flexibility and want to take an earlier flight. It worked out for me as I couldn't get the non-stop flight to New Orleans, and this was my second choice because I could fly in a 787. I was pleasantly surprised when I found out that morning that the flight was on a 787-10, which is a plane I've never flown in, and I could get to New Orleans with enough time for dinner and get a good night's rest. My original flight was on a red eye. So you do have to be looking before the flight as seats can open up at any time. So. Other than the delay and the IFE problem, the flight overall was pretty good. The crew seemed very friendly, and it was a mix of younger and older flight attendants. However, I just wish there was more food choices. But it's united, and I loaded up in the lounge because I knew what to expect. So here we are landing in Houston. Enjoy the landing. Welcome to Houston. We're about 30 minutes behind schedule.
Glenn be the first to welcome you to Houston where the local time is 5.32. We say come from the seat until the seatbelt sign is off. You may continue to use the charge your phone and tell up it. Tap it. If you're sitting next to please don't put your device into the outlets. Double check your seatback pocket area and the seat to make sure you have all of your belongings. Then be careful when opening your overhead bin. Once the passenger seatbelt sign is turned off, please stand clear of the doors to allow flight attendants to complete important safety duties. Once we arrive at the gate, we'll be handing you off to our airport team. They may, they'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Any check luggage may be retrieved from baggage carousel 3. On behalf of the entire other team and our stylized partners, thank you for flying with us today. Thanks for joining me on United 382 from SFO to Houston. We'll see you next time. Bye.